We're going to look at some basic properties and components of an electrical circuit by comparing it to a closed water system. In both our electrical circuit and in our water system, we're dealing with what's called a closed circuit or a closed loop. This is where the electrical current can flow through an uninterrupted path that's continuous. Let's start by comparing these two systems. First, we have the water system, which uses pipes to pass the water through it. In our electrical circuit, the wires carry the electrical current. The electrical current flowing through the wires in the circuit are generally thought of as electrons, but in fact, they can actually be electrons or protons that flow through the wires. Through our water system, we have a pump which creates a pressure difference in our pipes. In the case of our electrical circuit, a battery or a generator creates an electric potential difference. This is very similar to the differences in pressure before and after our water pump. The electric potential difference in our circuit is also known as a voltage. In both cases, it's the differences in either the pressure in the water system or the electrical potential energy in the circuit that causes a flow in the system. In the case of the electrical circuit, we are talking about a direct current, which has a continuous flow, rather than an alternating current, which is more common in homes and buildings. In the case of the water system and the electrical circuit, something is continuously flowing through our system. In both situations, in our water system and in our circuit, we can have something that shuts off the flow of water or the electrical current. In the case of the water system, this is a shutoff valve. In the case of our electrical circuit, this is a switch. The switch breaks our closed circuit or our closed loop, which stops the flow of electricity. In both situations, we can also have something that's known as a load. This is a device or an object that's going to be using some of the energy in the flow of whatever is in our system. In the case of our water system, we may have something like a turbine which is powered by the flow of the water through of the pipes. In the case of our electrical current, we might have a light bulb, which is also powered by the flow of electricity through the wires. In both types of systems, we can also use some devices to give us more information about what is exactly happening in that system. As was mentioned, the water pump creates a pressure difference in the pipes. And we can use two pressure gauges, one before and one after the pump, to determine this pressure difference. The same is true for our electrical circuit. In this case, a battery or a generator creates a potential energy difference or a voltage in our system. We can use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference before and after that battery or generator. In a water system, we can also measure how much water is flowing past a certain part in our system. This is done by what's called a flow meter. This measures how much water is moving past that point in a certain amount of time. This can be done in gallons per minute or liters per minute. We have a similar way of measuring the flow of current in our system. This can be done in our electrical circuit with a device known as an ammeter. This measures how many amps or amperes are flowing through our system. This is essentially how many electrons or protons are flowing through our wire every second. An amp is equal to 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrical carriers, protons or electrons, moving past the point per second. 